OpenAI just released its newest model, GPT-40, which stands for Omni Model. Now, this is actually available through the API. And because of that, some of the highlights for me are 50% lower pricing, two times faster latency, and five times the rate limits. Now, I've done some initial testing on this. I don't have any benchmarks, but it seems really fast. And so what I wanted to do today is take a look at how we can use this API in a pure Java program. No external dependencies, just a straight Java app. How can we contact this API and take advantage of this new model in our application? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create a new Java application that talks to OpenAI's GPT-4. And I hope you learned something today with that. Let's write some code. All right, so I'm getting started by using IntelliJ's Ultimate Edition. This should work in the Community Edition as well. But as I always tell everybody, you know, use whatever IDE or text editor or notepad or whatever you're most productive in. That is the best editor to use. I just happen to really like this one. So whatever you're using, we're gonna create a new Java project. So I'm here in the new wizard. I'm gonna say I'm creating a Java project. I'm going to call this Hello GPT. For O, and I'm going to place this in my Java directory. I'm building this using Maven, though again, we aren't using any external dependencies in this particular video. I always like to start with the build tool because ultimately you're going to need some other dependencies uh, after this video. You might want to bring in something like Jackson to kind of like deserialize the, whatever you're getting back from the LM into some type of object. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my group ID to dev.danvega. My artifact is hello GPT-4.0. That should be enough to go ahead and create me a project. All right, and I'm using Java 21 here. Uh, it really shouldn't matter as long as you're on at least JDK 11, I think is when the HTTP client was introduced because that's what I'm gonna use today. So in here, I have source main Java. I'm gonna create a new Java class under dev.danvega. We'll just call this application. And inside of application, I'm going to create a public static void main. And the first thing that we're going to need is our open AI API key. Now you're probably saying, Dan, I don't have one of those. That's okay, let's say open AI API key is equal to some kind of string. Now, where are we gonna get this from? Let's head back over to the browser and talk about that. Here we are on OpenAI's website. Uh, we need to go ahead and uh, either create an account or log in into an existing account. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to API login. And yes, I am logging into the API. There's a difference between the API and chat GPT, which kind of sits in front of the different models. So we're gonna log into the API section. I already have an account here. There's a section for API keys. I already have API keys, but let's go ahead and create a new one because I'm going to create this one and then delete it uh, because I'm gonna end up showing you my API key here. So I have a key, what are we gonna call this? Let's call this uh, YouTube. Let's spell Dan, YouTube API key. Um, we'll just leave this in the default project. I believe this is something they announced pretty recently, the idea of projects, but I'm just gonna create this under default. So I'm gonna say create new uh, secret API key. I'm going to copy that. And now I can go back to my IDE and fill this in. And actually, I think I call this API key in the regular repo. So I will go ahead and change that there. This again, there is a repo for this. I will leave that in the description below. So I have pasted in my API key here. Again, this will be gone by the time you watch this video. This is bad practice though. We don't wanna do this because of what if we wanna check this into Git? We don't wanna check our API's keys into Git. So I'm actually gonna copy that out. I'm gonna go in here and go to edit my run configuration. I'll go ahead and run this once. And if I go to application and edit configuration, I'll go ahead and set an environment variable. I'll say open AI API key equals, and then I'll paste that in. Now I can use this in this program without uh, exposing my API key. And the way that I can do that is just say system.git environment. Um, and I'll go ahead and say open. AI API key, and now we should have an API key. So with that, now I need to put together a request, the body of the request that I'm going to send to OpenAI. Now I'm gonna spare you some time of digging through the documentation. I've already done that, I've, I've done this before, but if you're wondering where this is coming from, if you go over to OpenAI's documentation, it will say, hey, like if you're trying to make a request, 
to something like the chat completions API, this is what the request body should look like. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, I'm going to go ahead and use var and say body. And then I have a quick uh, live template that kind of outputs this for me. This is just some JSON, right? I'm using uh, multi-line strings in Java so that I have to do some like weird concatenations. So I have this JSON object. It has a few key value pairs here. One is the model. So what is the current model that you want to use? You could use something like uh, Turbo, uh, 3.5 Turbo. You can use 4. You can use the latest and greatest, which is GPT-4.0. Uh, then we need to pass in some messages. This can be a list of messages. This could be a single message. And we have these things called uh, these different uh, rules in the, uh, for messages that we're sending in. They could be things like assistance or system or functions or user role. And the user role is what are, what are you trying to ask the LM? So in this case, I want to say, tell me a good dad joke about cats. That's my go-to, either dogs, cats, something, uh, some type of dad joke. That's what I want to ask the LM to. So that's my request body. Now I need to go ahead and put together that request. And to do so, I said it, I'm going to use the JDK's uh, HTTP client. So HTTP request, we can go ahead and create a new instance of this using the new builder method. And this will allow us to construct a request. So what I'm, the first thing I'm going to say is, what is the URI? And the URI is where we are going to call. Again, I'm pulling this out of the documentation for uh, OpenAI's uh, GPT. So I'm going to say uri.create. Here's the URL that we're calling. Uh, I'm going to set in a couple headers. The first header is the content uh, type, and that is going to be application slash JSON. And then I need another header for the authorization, and this is going to be uh, bearer. And then this is going to include our API key. So that will construct the authorization header. If you don't pass this in correctly, it won't allow you to use the API. So we have um, that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post. I'm sending a post request. Uh, and the way that we do this is we're going to use the HTTP request.bodypublishers dot of string and we're passing in the body there so i'm saying body and that looks good after all of that i'm going to go ahead and build that which is going to give me back uh, an http request that i'm going to call request all right so so far so good i have my api key i have the request body that i'm going to send as part of a post request uh, to OpenAI's GPT, and then I've constructed my request. So the last thing to do is actually send that request off. So what we can do is we can use the um, HTTP client. So we're saying HTTP client is equal to, uh, actually, let's call this new HTTP client. Sorry, new HTTP client. We'll get a variable back, and I will call this the client. Um, so the client takes in a request to be able to send it off. So we can say client.send, and it takes in a request. So here's the request. And then it wants to know how you're going to handle the response. In this case, I'm going to say the HTTP response, um, HTTP response dot body handlers, and we're just going to say we're going to get back a string. Now, if I wanted to like turn this the response into some type of object that I can work with later, uh, then I could do that. But right now, I just want to get back a string. So we can say that we're going to get a response back. Let's call that response. And then what I'll go ahead and do is just print out the uh, response dot body. So that looks good. Uh, we need to add an exception here. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's just review. Um, we have our public static void main here. We're going to get our API key from an environment variable instead of hard coding that in here. We have our request body. That is the request, the part of the post that we're going to send off. Here's We're kind of building a request. We're not actually sending it yet. Uh, that's what the HTTP client in uh, the JDK does. So we create an instance of the HTTP client using this new HTTP client method. Uh, once we have the client, we can go ahead and say send, and the send takes in the request, 
and how you want to handle that response. And then we're just going to print it out. So if everything goes well, uh, let's go ahead and run this. And one of the things you'll notice right away is because we're using GPT-40, the response was very fast. Uh, again, I don't have any benchmarks on this, but I know in the past I've kind of run programs like this and just kind of sat there and waited for an answer. This seems like very immediate. Sure, here's a good dad joke about cats for you. Why did the cat sit on the computer? Because it wanted to keep an eye on the mouse. Good one, good one. Ah, love it. All right, so. Um, that's really all I wanted to do in this. Again, I wanted to kind of show you, A, how you can sign up for an API key on OpenAI's website. Um, by the way, we haven't talked about this. If you ha if you don't see GPT-4.0 in there, uh, it may be because you don't have credits in there. And you may need to put some money in to run some credits. Again, everything runs off of tokens. As long as you're just doing this on your development machine, a couple bucks is fine. I think I have $10 in there and I spent like maybe a dollar over the last few months. <laughs> so it's not a lot, but it is something you want to think about if you're going to take this like into production somewhere. But just developing, uh, it should be okay. If you don't see 4.0 in there, maybe it's, I think I've heard people say it's because they didn't have any money in their account. Um, so it wasn't available yet to the free tier. So I could be wrong on that. But um, that we, we took a look at how to get signed up for that. And then really just how to talk to the REST API here in a normal, plain job application, no external dependencies. Now, I will say this. This is a good, like, get your feet wet, get off the ground. As you start to explore AI and something like OpenAI's GPT-40, and you start building these real-world applications, you're going to realize that you need a little bit more. you got to solve for a lot of these problems that are going to come up. So being able to take what the LM gives you and turn that into uh, something uh, using some type of output parser, um, being able to like effectively uh, and create these prompts and do things like create prompt templates and uh, it, you know replace kind of tokens within these templates, uh, being able to roll your bring your own data, being able to like stuff the prompt, uh, being able to uh, use something like RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, to uh, work with things like vector databases uh, to kind of augment the, the LLM. Uh, doing something like a function call, like I want some real-time data, like what is the weather today? Um, being able to just set that up. <clears throat> There's a lot that goes into building AI applications. And if this is something that interests you, there are a couple of really great projects out there, Lang for Chain J, which is the Java kind of equivalent of Lang Chain, but it, not really because it started that way and it's kind of like diverged in a different direction, uh, kind of on its own, which is a good thing. And then Spring AI, one that I'm like heavily invested in, and I've done a lot of tutorials on this channel on. Uh, if you're building kind of uh, entire backend applications in Spring and you want to add AI into your application, Spring AI is awesome. So, hey, I hope this was a really good introduction into AI and talking to OpenAI's GPT-40. Uh, if you learned something new today, friends, do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.